How many homes it, 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 among this complex do, do we know burned overnight into the, this morning? And, and tell um, me about that count and that effort to find out how many were burned. Were... Last night, uh, we don't think we lost any homes last night. Um, we, uh, as the, the fire organization, as a team, uh, aren't in uh, in a good place for us to go out and make a count on homes because we're, we're out there moving around trying to go from house to house and we don't know what was a primary structure, what was an outbuilding, what was a greenhouse. Uh, so we leave that to the county assessors and the sheriff's department. Uh, they are working with us for areas that are secure for them to get into and look at. They've started at this end of the valley and they're working their way uh, through the fire area. And uh, we'll, we'll get those numbers out just as soon as we get them from them. But for us to try to make a guess, we don't, it's hard for us to pick because we don't really know what is, what's what out there. Are homes being threatened right now, and what area are you most concerned about? Uh, the area we're most concerned about is the area just north of town here in that um, Union Canyon area. Uh, the subdivisions up there between Union Canyon and Echo Mountain, the ski area that's up there. Uh, there's stuff at the top of that drainage there that we're trying to figure out a way to cut the fire from coming any farther down. If it does keep coming, you know, its next stop is coming down one of these canyons and coming into the other end of town, and that's where we're focusing our effort today. Winds today ever favorable? <laughs> Winds today are going to be uh, about what we saw yesterday. Not talking about a big change, but our meteorologist is giving us a warning for Wednesday. Um, uh, going into Wednesday, we're going to see. We seem to be in a kind of a cycle where we're going with kind of the doldrums which we have right now to uh, a dry front coming through again. That'll increase the winds. It'll increase the mixing. We'll get a little more fire behavior. It's going to stay warmer, get temperatures going to come up a little bit, our inches will drop down again. And it seems to be a, a pattern that's cycling through uh, every few days. We'll do that, then we'll kind of come into where that'll move on. The high will build in, we'll get a cap, the temperatures will go down, the R inches will come up. Um, and that seems to be a pattern we're getting into. We've got a thousand firefighters to see out there on the lines. This is now the highest priority fire in the country. Is that, is that actually enough? Um, we have got uh, people to cover what we're trying to get done right now. Uh, we're dealing with what we do have. We are not, uh, uh, we actually dropped from being the number one priority to number two or three today. Um, like I said last night at the, at the community meeting, that we're number one for now and we can be replaced uh, easily as other fires are looking at what's going on. Uh, there's just a, a tremendous strain on the system right now as it is. Everybody would like more of whatever it is they're looking for. We're feeling pretty lucky in that we have the guard, we've got the, uh, the DNR crews, we've got some hotshot crews. We probably have more helicopters than uh, any other fire going on uh, in Washington for sure. Um, so we're feeling pretty comfortable with what we have right now. Sure, we'd always like to be able to get more, but with what we have right now, we're putting together a pretty good plan. We think uh, that'll meet uh, some of our objectives and, and protect the values that we have at risk. For the people that live here, how would you gauge, how would you gauge their safety? The people right here? Yeah, that's right. Um, like I was saying last night also at the community meeting, uh, in one of the forms that we fill out that we kind of turn in every day for our kind of night report, there's a box in there that I checked that says potential future threat. Um, and this area is still under a potential future threat. Um, it's going to be that way until we can get some line established uh, north of us just outside of town here or until the weather changes. And we don't see the weather changing, so we're working really hard. Uh, to get that line in and start to get some control in place. What's the percentage of containment? Uh, we still haven't called uh, any of it contained yet, but you'll see that change tonight. Uh, we've got some areas that we've gotten lying around. Uh, crews have walked through it and checked it. And when we, we start to call an area contained, that, that means firefighters have kind of wandered through the area and pretty much looked at any of the ash pits, and they've actually put their hands in them and checked them to see if they're cold. And we go through the edge, and secure a short part of the edge first, maybe 50, 25, uh, and then we'll start working out 100 to 200 feet, 300 feet later on when we start calling it control. But we try to get it contained first. That's just that first narrow bit where we don't think it's going to move out of there again. It still could, but we're, we're pretty confident that it's not. You'll see some of that coming in tonight as we get more intel, we get more people on the ground, we get some of these areas covered. We like to get through it once, we don't see it move, we come back through, we don't see any more smokes on the edge. We come back through again, there's nothing, we've kind of hand-checked some stuff, then we'll call it contained, and we're feeling pretty comfortable that's not going to move from that spot. Can you clarify, just for redundancy's sake, what the Chelan Complex fire is now the umbrella of? Does that include the Wolverine fire and the first, I mean, just, just so I know. Um, 
the incident management team is managing the Blankenship fire, the Wolverine fire, uh, the First Creek fire, the Chelan complex, which was Reach, Cagle, and Antone, and we're also managing Black Canyon and uh, the McFarland Creek fire. Uh, some of those names have changed just because of, uh, um, well, they changed just as we changed management and we took over them and we needed to make some changes so that everybody is on the same page knowing the fires we're talking about. Those are the fires that uh, Pacific Northwest Team 2 right now has uh, control over. Do you expect much growth today? Uh, I do expect growth to the north on the Chelan complex. Um, that's going to keep going to the north and a little bit to the west. Um, the, like I said, to the um, uh, McFarland and Black Canyon are probably going to burn together today. Um, so that would kind of be north and south, and then they're just kind of expanding out a little bit. Uh, and we're hopefully uh, the only advance we'll see on First Creek will be uh, to the north and west, uh, away from the structures and kind of up uh, out into the, the country there, and that's where we're trying to get some more What's the latest acreage for the Chelan complex? Uh, we were just shy of 60,000 acres for the Chelan complex uh, this morning. Is the worst behind us? Uh, I, you know, a lot of it depends on what kind of success we have up there today in that uh, Union Canyon area. Uh, if, if we can get some line established in there and start moving towards the, the north, it's just tricky country because wherever you go, once you get to, you think you're at a spot where you're looking good, then all of a sudden the ground drops away, goes into a canyon, and then shoots up the other side, uh, and there's no road access to get in there. So somehow we have to figure out a way to, to bring fire with us to get across that so that it doesn't keep coming down the canyon. So. Um, you know, it's it, it, we're we're doing what we can. Uh, we're we're in a fight, like I said, up in there, uh, trying to get across that, and we'll we'll see where we end up at the end of the day. Uh, we're feeling pretty good about the plan we have in place. We're feeling good about the assets that we have. Um, if the the smoke clears enough, you'll probably see a pretty good air show in here today. Uh, we want to put some retardant up there, so, some stuff for us to work off of. If the guys can find the right spot, <coughs> we were talking about it earlier on that. We end up making a shift at some point when we start doing initial attack uh, and we go into the extended attack, it's what we're doing. We go from point protection where we're trying to just get around all the values that are at risk and then we start building a strategy for how we can do what we call perimeter control or putting some lines around this to stop the, the advancement of the fire itself. And we're in that transition phase right now where we're going from structure protection to perimeter control, trying to come up some places where we can get dozers and hand crews do some firing, use the heavy helicopters and retardant to build line and get uh, away from the values that are at risk. Any idea how many homes are threatened in that area? Uh, we just took a snapshot of it last night and in that area up there we're thinking probably about 400 homes. Um, that's just a really rough guess but that's what we were, we kind of do a circle around it and started kind of counting the boxes that were on the map. What area is that? That's Union Canyon, is that, uh, that what you're just talking about? Yeah, okay. Union Valley. Okay. I believe it's the term that it's. It's about 400. Yeah.